For landlords, by landlords. The Rent Perfect Podcast with David Pickrock. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of the Rent Perfect Podcast. See, I've got a new guest today. You know, we see Scott Aubrey over there sometimes. We see our attorneys and we talk about stuff, but... I got a fellow landlord with me, Gary Mazzarella. Gary, how are you? I'm doing well, Dave. Thank now, you Gary's, for having me. Gary, you've been a long time uh, client of Rent Perfect. Yes. And and Gary and I got a little bit more connected because we're, we're launching a new work order system that we're getting ready to launch. It's going to be amazing. And I asked him, I asked some clients, hey, who's willing to help me kind of pre-test this, beta test it before we launch it? And Gary was kind enough to reach out and and say, hey, I'm in. I'll help you out. And uh, so we had lunch and we talked. And uh, Gary from New Jersey and, New and Jersey, Arizona. Arizona, and you kind of do the mix. And we just had a great lunch the other day. Yes, we did. And I uh, had some uh, great conversations. So I want this audience to know a little bit, of more, bit more about you. So tell me kind of where you grew up. And then I really want to know, how did you lean into, the, you know, the investor side of it, the, the accumulating property, the, sure. the landlord side of it? Uh, both here in Arizona and in New Jersey. Well, born and raised in New Jersey. Okay. Uh, small business minded, in small business. Always loved real estate. My wife and I in our early 20s, before we even got married, bought our first uh, property. Okay. Then we bought a second property. And then we built ourselves our home and uh, went to work. We okay, dug so in. you bought a rental property before you bought your own home. Uh, we bought two rental properties before okay, we bought so our home. Okay, so you loved rental properties at an early age. Yes. But where did you learn that yes. from? Like, I mean, did you? You know, it's just been in the family, mm -hmm. the business side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad had some rental properties. He built a few homes over the years okay. when, uh, when I was in my early childhood. So I've witnessed that, right. you know. Right. And... Quite frankly, who doesn't like to collect rent? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right? Right. And there are certain people that will run from this industry. That's like, I can't believe you have rental homes. I can't believe you deal with properties. And I, it, my, my mind doesn't compute that. I'm like, um, isn't it obvious that you would want to buy an asset, someone else pay for it? Oh, absolutely. And you absolutely. still own it, you know? Absolutely. So, awesome. You okay. Know, there's no more work involved in managing a single family home, a townhouse, a condo, right. than your own home. Right. Now, <clears> now Gary... I'm kind of a wimp, I'll be honest with you, okay? <laughs> All of my rental properties are here in Arizona. Right. So I got some in Tucson, and I got some up in Payson, and most of them are here in the Phoenix area. I have just haven't quite... Now, I do have a short-term rental in Mexico, but it's kind of... I got a manager because it's in Mexico doing that, so it doesn't take a lot of my time. But is there a difference between New Jersey and Arizona real estate, or people, or managing, or... Oh, region... Speaking regionally, absolutely. There's always differences. I mean, there's differences from town to town, let alone right. 2,300 miles in the opposite direction. Yeah, Kay. absolutely. And is there advantages to Arizona, advantages to New Jersey? Well, many advantages here in Arizona in terms of the landlord-friendly laws. Okay. In New Jersey, not on your side. Okay. So if you have a little extra dough right now, you're putting your money in Arizona. I am. Because I will. Because absolutely. of the government and regulation. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, so I always say if there's 30 landlords in a room, there's 30 different ways to manage. And I think that mm. we have our own little kind of like fingerprint on the way we kind of manage people. So what are some of the things that uh, you do uh, in your management style that you think really works for you? I try to keep in contact with our tenants. Okay. I don't mind them having... You know, my cell phone number. Okay. I don't mind hearing their issues. And I'll be honest with you, over the years, minor, very few. Okay. Of course, you're going to get the clogged sink, the clogged toilet. Right. The broken appliance. It happens. It happens right. in our own homes. So you're a relationship landlord. I don't mind the relationship. Absolutely. I'd rather have them call me the minute they think there's a problem, even if there isn't a problem. If we can catch it before there is a problem, we've solved right. at least you know, or avoided an issue. Right. I just, I meet so yeah. many people who buy properties and they're really good investors, mm. but you know, then they don't take off that investor hat and become that relationship type oh, you, of you've manager, You've got to build, right? you, you, you know, you build that relationship with your tenants. I feel they stay longer. Yeah. They like you or... Um, Which accumulates into more money. <laughs> yes, it does. Right? Yes, it does. Okay. I love that. I am too a relationship manager. I know... You know, all of my uh, tenants, they all have my cell phone number. 
I don't mind if they Mine know too. where I live. Um, I do proper screening so I know who I kind of have in my properties and who who these people are, you know. But, uh, yeah, I love that. I love that. You and I manage the Screening is everything. Rent Perfect has taught me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I do do some background checks on some people that I wouldn't want to have my address and my phone number, but I also wouldn't rent to them or <laughs> choose to have a relationship <laughs> with them in that, uh, in that capacity. Okay. So where are you looking to go in the future? You are in your fifties, sixties. Where are uh, you at? Just turning 60. Oh my gosh, goodness. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm catching up to you. Thank you. Okay. Now most people are winding down their careers. Where are you going? I will buy another home or two or three, uh, when I feel I come across a good deal. Okay. So you're yeah. actively looking right now. Yes. Yes. Awesome. I like the fix, uh, the fix and hold. Okay. Um, hard to find a reasonably priced uh, rehab out yes. there. Right. Used to be a lot easier. Used to be and a lot are easier. you a single family home investor? Do you mind duplexes, triplexes, multifamily? Right now, everything we own is a single family. Okay. Whether it's a condo, a townhome, or a you know three, two, somewhere here in either Tempe or uh, Phoenix. Okay. We manage a lot of like same with me. I'm just a single family home kind New Jersey, type of guy. Now, we were talking at lunch and you said you had a property, if I remember right, either that your son managed or maybe your son had the property where he rented by the room. Yes. Okay. Yes. Tell me about that. Rent by the room can be a little tricky, uh -huh. but if you're on top of it, it works. It works well. Okay. Um, do you, did you find yourself as kind of a babysitter in between relationships there no. or... No, people were no, pretty really, much really that hasn't that issue hasn't come up, although I, it can and it can okay. quickly or easily. But uh, perhaps it's the way he screens or the way he uh, <laughs> he does chooses it. the tenant. Um, he's avoided all that. You know, I think my son, who also has rental properties, would rent by the room way before I would. I, maybe it's yeah. just old school. Same with me. I wasn't know. comfortable with it. But, yeah. uh, you know, him being in his upper 20s, uh, just turning uh -huh. 30, eh, no problem. That generation yeah. is... Yeah, I look at Airbnb mindset. where someone can come rent your couch, or, and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I see too many bad things in these background checks that think who is the stranger sleeping on the couch, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm not going down so, that road. So that's crazy. Awesome. Um, hey, is there anything else that you do in your style that you feel like um, maybe some people are scared of or shy away from? We mentioned, we talked about pools, Gary, and, and, and I'm sitting here right now. You're worried about pools. Going, I have <laughs> never bought a property with a pool. I've turned right. down many properties because of just what I feel would be that maybe the liability, the headache, and you're like, sure. I love pools. I don't mind pools. We have two rentals with pools. Okay, a little extra maintenance on the pools, but you build that into your rent. Okay, so tell me about that. So, so uh, hire good, find a good pool company. They're All hard right. to find, but when you do find one, make sure you keep that pool service there. Okay. Uh, fence your pool in. Okay. Carry an umbrella uh, insurance policy. Okay. Um, and you feel comfortable with I that? I feel very comfortable with it. And I think it's a, a, a good um, a good hook, you know, when your home is up for rent, uh, right. available with pool. A lot of people appreciate now, it. No, I, I, people ask me all the time, does it have a pool? Sometimes I like yeah. having these condos because they have the, the community right. pool, you know, down there. But a lot of people want their own private pool. Think about pool having your own backyard. private pool, pool yeah. service. Right. $100, $120 a month. Someone's going to come by, keep right. the chemicals, uh, keep right. the pool c clean, keep the chemicals in. Now, when balance. you first bought your home with your first pool, mm -hmm. did you let the, the tenant take care of the pool? No. You knew from day no. one. You're like, this is just no. too hard for them to take care of. I don't want them touching the pool. Hands off the equipment, hands off the pool. Let, let the professionals let do the it. Let the professionals do it. Just enjoy okay. it. Okay. So you'll be at market rent plus 120 150 bucks. Build into the rent. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I love that. I should try the pool one of these days. Don't be afraid but, of it. Uh, Don't be afraid of it. I think, I think uh, it's a plus. Yeah. But I, I really think do. having that good pool. Uh, but it should be a good pool getting uh -huh. into the property. Right. I mean, we've renovated a property where the pool costs us $12,000 to repair. Yeah. It was a big repair, but it was a complete re it was a complete rebuild of an entire pool. Right. And so. it probably came out beautiful. But it came out beautiful. Great it did. Had a value add to it. Okay. Yeah. All long-term rentals, I think. Um, any plans on getting any short-term, mid-term? Uh, what do you think? Is that I, scary? Yeah. You know, I would. I, I like the idea of mid-term. Sure. I just haven't, I haven't figured it out yet. Yeah. You know, I'm comfortable where I'm at. 
Yeah. I like that 12 month lease or 24 month lease. Yeah. Now I understand that. I, I do all of them. Yeah. I will tell you the easy rentals are the long terms. They see um, the, the less headaches. A little bit more lucrative rentals are the midterms and the and the if you have the mm. right property, the short term rentals yeah. are really, really good. But we won't we won't go into that. I'm just yeah, picking yeah, your brain as uh, your style and how you manage and I know that when I get somebody right now that says, Hey, I need a pool, I'm calling you and seeing if you have uh, <laughs> if we, a rental yeah. open for one of those guys. Gary, I certainly appreciate it. It's nice to have just you know, a lot of podcasts would have a big name investor on or big whatever, but you know, the heroes to me. Yeah are just the guys who love their families, right? Just trying to get by in life, have a few rental properties, yeah, and, yeah. and just live a good quality life. So, Gary, to yep. me, you're a hero to me, and well, I loved you having that. you uh, I loved having you on the podcast today. And I know that I feel like Rent Perfect is really tied into a lot of you and me. It's just good people out there who are just trying to get ahead. And we take pride in saying, hey, listen, trust us to do the background. Mm-hmm investigation on these people because you and I know we don't make money off the brick and mortar. We make money off the good people Absolutely. who pay rent and, and rent perfect is all about finding, you know, good people. Now we are an investigative background check company. That's the core of where we've come from right now. We've added, you know, online application and leases right, and rent right. pays. But if people say, Hey Dave, what's the difference between you and, and Zillow and you and apartments.com and you and whatever it's, it's, it's our background check component isn't an API out to an instant database and pull it in. Our background component is our f- core function, is our base. And so we will, um, it, we will do just a deep, deep. It works well. Yeah. It's easy to understand. I, yeah. I love it. But the more we add these features like this work order coming in here next week, the mm-hmm. more we add the features, the more I feel like I get away from telling people, hey, listen, we are a background investigation. We're all private investigators when you use Rep Perfect. You have a specific private investigator signed to your file, looks right. over your... So I don't mean to give a commercial, but um, certainly appreciate you here. And I'm glad you're a Rent Perfect client. We hope you're a Rent Perfect I'm glad client to be forever. One. And thanks for helping me with our new one. feature. And let's face it, you, you have a 400000 or $500,000 asset that you have to put in the right person's hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's critical. It's critical, absolutely. Well, thanks again, Gary, for being uh-huh. here. And until next time, continue to rent. Perfect. Perfect.